vision, the vision of our church, and every single Sunday it's being reaffirmed and reaffirmed and uh, reminded, is to see people saved and to see people healed, to see people freed from demons and curses, and to see those people raised up to be leaders in the kingdom of God. Leaders meaning that they are going to bring other people to Jesus Christ. Amen. We live in a country today where though it's on our dollar and God we trust, yet not in the heart of people of United States in God we trust. And so though it's a considered in well no longer a Christian country but though it's a country where it's freedom but at the same time we know that people are in need of Jesus Christ. And we want to see many people come to Jesus but not only come to Jesus we want to see people be healed because there's a lot of people who are sick and there's plenty more their problem is not sickness their problem is curses and demons when a person has 10 surgeries on the same spot their problem is no longer physical their problem has become spiritual when a person visited nine rehabs with the same issue their problem is no longer lack of discipline their problem is spiritual and giving them a tablet a little tape to help them to stop smoking is not going to solve a spiritual problem when our country has the most people struggling with mental diseases than any other nation in the world that tells us we have spiritual problems and just because we have universities and just because we have educated people and just because we have you know people who smile that doesn't necessarily mean we're exempt from the power and influence and attacks of satan and there is only one name that is able to stand against that and that is the name not of buddha muhammad or krishna it is the name of jesus christ can somebody say amen <laughs> This vision is the vision God has given to every church and everyone I believe to some degree believes in this vision but not everyone believes enough to act on it. In our church we want this vision to be the core of our life and the core of our being and we understand that this vision does not happen automatically. Just because we get up and talk about it that doesn't mean it's going to happen without prayer prayer is going to be the fuel for this vision to run you can have a wonderful vision but if you do not have a power behind that vision it just simply will become a daydream you can have a very wonderful car in your driveway you can have a just the, the, the 2015 i mean top dog in the city I mean the nicest car but if you do not have a fuel that car will go only as far as you push it amen if this vision does not have people around it add fuel by their prayer we will end up pushing this vision with our own strength that's why it's so important that in our church not only in our personal lives but in corporate times when on Wednesday morning at 6 30 we're gonna pray that you are here that when on Friday night at 10 o'clock you may say that's late perfect that's when the devil starts his work on Friday nights that's when all the clubs get open on Friday night and that's exactly when people get ready to fuel the vision with prayer can somebody say amen when on Sunday morning, except the prayer lines, but every Sunday morning at 9, 9 15 here, we gather together to pray. This is the fuel of this vision for the glory of God. Can somebody say amen? amen. I want to just drop a few thoughts to you when it comes to prayer. There's many things you can delegate in your life. For example, if you are very fortunate to hire somebody to clean your house, you are very fortunate. Maybe you are very fortunate to have somebody cook for you. Then you are very fortunate but you cannot make anybody eat for you right you can't make no one exercise for you you can't pay me to go exercise for you you are not gonna get fit you're gonna get anything but fit if i'm gonna exercise for you right there are many things you can delegate you can ask people to cut your grass but you cannot ask people to take shower for you no they can't <laughs> they are not going to, you are not going to smell good if they are going to take shower for you you can ask people to drive your wife from her work to the house but you can't hire them to make love to her that's just wrong there are many things in life you cannot delegate you must take the responsibility 
You cannot hire somebody to worship God for you. You cannot pay somebody 20 bucks and say, hey, can you spend one hour every day and pray for me? <laughs> well, I go around and do what I do. You can delegate many things in life. Prayer cannot be delegated. It's yours. It's something so personal, so private, and so intimate with God that it can never be delegated. Just like you can never delegate somebody to love your wife for you, you can never delegate someone to pray for you. It is your job. Can somebody say amen? I've been enjoying this moment of my life where I've been delegating a lot more um, in, our, in, our, in our church, more than I've ever done before. It kind of becomes weird now where a lot more people doing a lot of things that I used to do which is very good because a lot of those things are very minor and so and it's so exciting you know to see different people already editing the videos and cutting the grass and I no longer cut the grass at church it's awesome and so but there's one thing that nobody ever can do for me and that is my own relationship with God and that is my responsibility with Jesus and even yesterday when I was here you know early in the morning and and spending time with Holy Spirit spending time with the Word of God you know and and I'm like, there's a lot of things that are delegated, but this thing can never be delegated. This is my own relationship with the Holy Spirit. And so is yours. Can somebody say amen? Amen, amen Olga? Amen. That's right, that's right. One more thing that we need to keep in mind about our prayer is that we usually pray for big things like our vision. But we also have to have small things we pray for, which we will receive answers for faster. And these answers will be a lot more, how can I say, like real. Because when you pray for something big, like if you're constantly praying for the world, eh, the answer to that might be a little bit shady. Until Jesus comes back, you're not going to be able to get up and say, well, that's right, God saved the whole world. It's not concrete. But you have to have specific things that you also pray for in your personal life that will, when you see the answers, they fuel your prayer to pray for the bigger things that you might not see the answers for right now. Amen. And that is how I practice my prayer life too. And that's how we practice our prayer life. That's why we have testimonies. We're going to hear testimonies after me. That's why we show these testimonies, not just simply to remind you, hey, we have testimonies. It's to remind you to keep praying for the things you are praying. This is supposed to be a fuel for your prayer of big things because you've received, you know, an answer in, in the area that may look small to you, but to those people, it looks very big. I remember when on Friday night prayer, when Irina mentioned that she had an ear um, infection for, throughout the whole day and other girls complained that she, not complained, they shared that she also complained to them. She said, I just have really just intense pain in my ear. And so, and as I was, we were just kind of going around and praying and, and I was about to go, I wanted to go pray for her. But I just felt this, this nudge in my heart. I was from the Holy Spirit, not now. And so I just kept, we were pacing back and forth. And so um, as I'm walking back and I just, just, I can't explain it. It was just something here that pray for right now. And so I asked her if I can, you know, lay my hand on her ear. And, um, and when I prayed, at that moment, I didn't tell her that. But I was 110% sure that problem is gone. I didn't even ask her afterwards. It was completely enough for God. Next morning, as I'm spending here time in prayer, I received exactly at that time a text message. She said, hey, the whole thing that we were praying for yesterday, it's completely gone. Amen. And this... It's a praise report, yet it's a challenge now to keep praying for the vision. Because the small things are an encouragement, not just so I can be happy, so I can be motivated to pray now for the bigger things that I'm praying for. When we heard, you know, the testimony of Michael who had a chronic fear of driving because of trauma. You know, this is not just simply, play, you know, clap and say praise God. This is also clap, say praise God and also say, hey, I'm now encouraged and I'm now challenged to pray for bigger things that I do not see the answers for. Can somebody say amen? And so I really want to encourage you today as you're going to receive an answer, as God is going to touch you, as you're going to experience a change, as you're going to hear testimonies, this is not an end to themselves. This is just also an encouragement so that you can pray now for revival of your city, revival of your family, a revival in your region, a revival in your church and a revival in your home group for the glory of God. 
Each apple, each fruit that God makes, God puts a seed inside. And the reason why is that when you finish eating the fruit, so you can have a seed to plant for another apple or another fruit. God wants every miracle not just to be bringing you joy and excitement, but bringing you a seed of faith for something bigger and something greater that He wants to do in your life. Can somebody say amen? Can somebody say praise the Lord? So you gotta pray. You gotta pray for big things. You gotta pray for small things. Many people only pray for small things. Oh God, give me a 10 green lights on my way to work. That is an awesome prayer, but nobody's gonna miss hell because of their prayer. Nobody's gonna have a cancer healed because of their prayer. That is a good prayer, but you have to also pray for big prayers. Because the God who gives you 10 green lights on your way to work, He also can give you 10 new souls this month and this week for His glory. That is our God. He can do small things, but He also can do big things. Can somebody say amen? amen? And lastly, what I want to remind you with is that when Joshua was going to the promised land, God promised to him a very, very big lot of land. He, it wasn't to him actually, it was to Abraham. And this promise was passed on from one generation to another. But it's very interesting that the historians and theologians agree that when Joshua conquered the land, you see at the end of Joshua's book, it says so much land that was not conquered yet. Even the next book, Judges, the angel of God came, actually was upset and saying, hey guys, you guys slacking, slacking off. You're not conquering any more land. Well, what's going on with this? And a lot of people agree, uh, the theologians and the, the, the big guys who have smart brains, um, they agree, they've studied and they found that Israel has never ever in its existence occupied all of the land God promised to Abraham. And this is what I want us to keep in mind. You don't get what God promised. You only get what you fight for. Amen. This is the measurements of what God has given to the church. God didn't give us properties or lands. God gets, said he's going to give us the Holy Spirit. And with the Holy Spirit will come mighty, mighty miracles. We can settle for a little piece or we can fight for more we can fight for more. You don't get it because God promised to you. Many people think, well, God said it, it settles it. No, it doesn't. If you are not going to fight for it, if you're not going to pray for it, it doesn't settle it. If God says it and it settles it, why does also God said in Matthew 7, 7, ask and it will be given to you. He didn't say, I made a promise, it will come to you. He said, you ask, it will be given to you. He said, seek you will find and he said knock and it will be open to you that means the promises of God are not automatic if they would be automatic every church would see miracles salvations and revival we think God plays favorites he doesn't God answers prayer whether you are an English speaking person praying a Chinese person speaking praying or you're a Spanish person speaking praying or a Ruski person praying God answers prayer and God is going to answer our prayer when we pray for revival. Can somebody say?